again, let me just simply say <clears throat> thank you for just helping us to launch what, what I hope will, will be a, a very significant part of our worship experience throughout 2021 as it unfolds. Uh, each second Sunday, again, pausing, praying, lifting, pointing, putting a pin on a map, and looking to a part of the world most of us would probably never have been or even ever will uh, visit, but that part of our family, body of Christ, lives there and suffers there. They're persecuted just because they are Christians. And again, not to deflect away at all from the needs, the problems that are around us. That those are very real, and we will focus our attentions upon them, but simply to raise our awareness beyond what we can just reach out and touch. Um, we, we're part of that worldwide body of Christ. And you know, every week as we gather and we affirm our faith, we refer to that group as the Holy Catholic Church. We say that each uh, week or almost every week in our Apostles' Creed. So I know uh, this, this little moment in our second Sundays is going to be a great blessing in our lives as the year progresses. I'm very excited about today's worship service because today we're going to take a journey back. Uh, I believe taking a journey back is what perhaps gives us courage to take steps into the future. In a few minutes, I'm going to give you an invitation and an opportunity to remember in a way that may be totally new to some of you I was reminded in a, in a devotional reading recently that in Jewish thought and practice, there really isn't the idea of walking into the future in, in the way that we often think of it. Because we often think of, you know, boldly facing and, and stepping out and facing the future and even going where no man has gone before, you know, on and on and on. In the Jewish way of thinking, a person, hear me, a person courageously backs into the future. Why? Well, we really can't see into the future. We all know we don't have a clue what tomorrow holds. That is a good and sobering reminder to us at any time of the year, but especially as we are, what, still less than two weeks into the start of this new year? The Jewish mindset knew that the only thing we can know for sure is what has already happened. Uh, so we move into the future by courageously backing into it. Every step, looking back and remembering all the ways God watched out for us, God protected us, God blessed us. Because the backward glance can reveal a lot of things. You might call it hindsight. In fact, some kind of playing with the words in the, ca in the calendar last year, in the hindsight is 2020 vision. However we say it, we know that it doesn't make any sense to go barging into the future without pausing to remember the past. Today, I want to spend a bit of time remembering. Uh, we, we are going to remember what happened in Jesus' life, and we're going to remember what happened in our own lives because today, we are taking some time to very simply remember your baptism. L let me ask you to stand again as we honor the reading of the Gospels. I'll be reading from Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 to 17. You'll remember these, these moments, this event in the life of Christ. Follow as I read. <clears throat> then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. 
This is God's word for us today, and our response is, thanks be to God. Please be seated. So today we read the account of Jesus' baptism. Now I know, I know that no one here actually remembers Jesus' baptism. Still, we are remembering. You know, it's almost like a birthday. I don't actually remember the day I was born, but every year I pause and remember that I was born. I, I just regret that there aren't piñatas anymore. Not tomorrow, but next Monday, we will remember the achievements and the impact of Martin Luther King Jr. Honestly, most of us here don't personally remember his speeches and marches. Some might. We, we have heard about them enough, and we know of them, but not necessarily a personal remembrance. <laughs> when our son Michael was just a couple of years old, we went to Disney World. And we had one of those, some of you will remember them, we had one of those huge video cameras, you know, kind of like you walk around with a boom box on your shoulder, and took lots of video of the park and of Michael in ex experiencing and interacting at the park. You know, and then as a child, then after we got home, and for years, Michael would sit and watch the same videos over and over and over. <laughs> years later, he would talk about that trip like he remembered everything. Well, what he remembered was what we told him and what he had seen in those videos. I, I am fully aware there are many here who would have to honestly say, I can't remember my baptism. I, I was only a child. I've seen pictures. My, my parents told me about that day, but I don't really remember. Can, can I say that is okay? Hear me. You're being able to literally remember something doesn't make it any more or less real. Let me say that again. Your being able to remember something doesn't make it any more or less real. Every time we pause and remember the events of Jesus' life, as in a few moments ago, we are simply saying, I believe that happened. I believe what Jesus did can and has changed my life. So let's look at a moment, for a moment, at baptism in general and at the baptism of Jesus in particular. If you remember one thing from today, please, please remember this. There are different understandings of baptism within the Christian world, and that is okay. You are with me? Today is not about trying to prove that we are right and that someone else is wrong about how they baptize or what they believe about baptism. Today, I just want to share what we as United Methodists believe about baptism. What can we learn for our lives as we remember not only our baptisms, but the particular baptism of Jesus? You know, in our United Methodist tradition, we believe that baptism is first and foremost a statement about God's grace. First and foremost a statement about God's grace. We we don't believe that it is first and foremost a, a public statement concerning a decision I have made. In other words, baptism is all about God and not really about me. Can I say that again? Baptism is really all about God and, and not about me. Baptism is all about God's grace at work in my life. And when I look back and remember I see how God has been faithful, even though I have to admit that I have not been nearly as faithful. When I remember my baptism, I am reminding myself that even though my life has had some, shall we just say, deep dips and twists and turns, God has been watching over me and leading me and bringing me to the point where I could, I could catch up, catch up with my baptism. And I know there are several here 
who could share a testimony of God's incredible faithfulness even when you were, shall we just say, not walking as closely to God as you might have been. Walking far from God. Because baptism is all about God and not about me. We also say that if someone has been baptized in another Christian denomination, we recognize that baptism and welcome it if they choose and wish to join our church. We simply want to know that a person was baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. If so, then that baptism in that church by that priest or pastor was just as real and valid as any baptism administered here at Florence Church. We, we will never say that a person has to be baptized by our preacher in our water in our church. And personally, I think that is wonderful. I just think that is wonderful. How could we begin to say we believe that we are part of the body of Christ even as we affirmed focusing our attentions on North Korea? How could we say we, be, we believe we are part of the body of Christ, part of the body of Christians all around the world if we then said, yeah, but to be part of our church, you have to be baptized in our way. Hmm. Baptism is all about God. God does not change even though we might go through all kinds of trying times and because God is the focus of baptism and God never changes in our United Methodist tradition we don't practice re-baptism why you know the only one who is eternal and unchanging in this whole experience is God we don't feel it is necessary to be baptized again we do believe it is always a good thing, a very good thing for someone to stand and share a testimony that gives God all the glory for having been faithful through all of life's ups and downs. It is wonderful when someone stands to say, God has always been there. And I am proof that God is faithful. I finally caught up with my baptism. What a great privilege to stand and say that. We also, we also refuse to argue or to insist about how baptism must happen. In other words, we, we recognize that baptism might be by, as we call it, immersion, or by pouring, or by sprinkling. The amount of water is not the focus. God's presence is the focus. And that can be symbolized in an ocean, in a lake, in a river, in a swimming pool, by a single drop of water. And as United Methodists, we also join with Christians all across the world and all down through Christian history in celebrating infant baptism. You know, infant baptism has a direct correlation to Jewish celebrating of infant circumcision which would happen to a baby boy at around age eight days. And of course, we have included infant girls in celebrating infant baptism as well. And I'm, I'm very well aware, no one, needs to, no one needs to come in and clear my thinking about this. I'm very aware that some denominations do not celebrate infant baptism. And we are not going to argue with them over that issue. There are writings from the earliest church fathers recognizing infant baptism. And so we, we are just simply in that long, long line of tradition. But today, today I want to remember Jesus' baptism. I don't literally remember, but today I remember Jesus' baptism. Why did he come to be baptized? What was God saying, not only to Jesus, but to us at that event? Hmm. Because, you know, again, John the, Baptist, John the Baptist was baptizing at the River Jordan. And many were coming to him to be baptized. That baptism was a baptism of repentance, as was well known. John was preaching, 
people were being convicted of their sin and the symbol of sins being washed away was baptism. That was a common Jewish practice of the day. There was the practice of baptism long before Jesus came. There wasn't yet the Christian practice of baptism in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So why did Jesus, who lived a sinless life, come to be baptized by John? Jesus didn't need to be baptized, but Jesus did need to begin a public ministry. Baptism, followed by anointing, were rituals that a priest needed to go through to be in public ministry. And Jesus said, you'll remember, I read it a moment ago, let it be so, John, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. In other words, Jesus is saying, I want to do this right. I want to do this right. So Jesus' baptism and our baptism were two different baptisms. We don't get baptized because Jesus got baptized. In fact, I believe Jesus got baptized because we needed to be baptized. Let me say that again. I think Jesus got baptized because we needed to be baptized. The entire gospel message, the story of salvation is about God in Jesus Christ knowing we could never be good enough to come to God. So God decided to come to us. Jesus' whole life was about being willing to identify with us so we could have a way to God. The Son of God became human so that humans could become children of God. Would you just read that statement with me, please? Let's read it together. The Son of God became human so that humans could become children of God. You know, we see Jesus getting into those waters of baptism at the Jordan. We see a preview of Calvary's cross. Jesus took our sins upon himself on the cross, but he, was all, he had already been willing to wade into the sin-filled waters of our lives. Jesus was willing to say to us that day, I know who you are. <laughs> I'm willing to walk where you walk and face the temptations you face. In other words, I am in. I am in, Jesus was saying to us. Today, I hope you will say Jesus say, you will hear Jesus say, I know you. I understand your life. I know the waters you swim in. Wow. John the Baptist couldn't have begun to imagine all that would happen next. <laughs> he knew Jesus was not just another person asking for forgiveness. In fact, he told his disciples when he first saw Jesus, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. But do you remember what happened next, even as we read it after John had baptized Jesus? Suddenly, there was this voice, the voice of God, the Father, saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. God the Father was saying that day, you are mine and I love you. Then what happened? The Holy Spirit in the form of a dove came down and landed on Jesus, alighted on him as our scripture said. And the dove has been a symbol of the Holy Spirit ever, ever since. God, the Holy Spirit, was saying to Jesus, You are mine. I am with you. Immediately after these readings, Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit out into the wilderness and faced great temptations. Next week, we are going there. I believe that in this event, the baptism of Jesus, we hear God saying three very, very powerful statements these are statements that God is saying to each of us at our baptism as well. God the Father is saying, you are mine, I love you. God the Son, Jesus, is saying, you are mine, I know and understand you. 
God the Holy Spirit is saying, you are mine. I am with you. Friends, I want us to remember that God is still saying those things to us today. We may have been baptized a long time ago, but God has not changed. God's promises to us have not changed. God's love for us has not changed. God's promise of being present with us has not changed. When we remember our baptism, we aren't just remembering an event. We are remembering a truth. We are remembering a promise. We are remembering that baptism is all about God and God does not change. In remembering your baptism, you are not only remembering who you are, but whose you are. God saying again and again and again, you are mine. So what do we do to remember? How do we symbolize that we are remembering? Well, I'm sure there are plenty of ways to go about symbolically remembering. And we've chosen one way today. The only way? No. But we've chosen a way to do this today. Today we're going to have the opportunity to come forward. And I realize uh, for now 10 months, we've not done a whole lot of come forward kind of things. And we'll ask you to do it, of course, in in an orderly way, spacing you, you, know the, you know the drill all around the community. But we'll ask you to come forward and take one of these little blue crystal stones that, that are here, little blue rocks that are on the, on the altar rail. Blue. You, you already know that they represent water. You will find them waiting for you. Now, let, let, me be, let me be socially distant, coronavirus, COVID-19 obnoxious, and just simply say, kind of like the kids at a buffet, if you touch it, that one's yours. Okay, we there? <laughs> Some may simply want to take the blue stone and just say, thank you, God. Some may want to take the little symbol of water and, and indeed form this, take the shape of the form of the cross on you as you walk away. Some may just simply want to touch your head as you remember or don't literally remember a pastor did years ago. There, there isn't a right or wrong way to symbolize that you are remembering. But most of all, I pray, as you go through this simple act, you'll remember that your baptism was and still is all about God's grace and God's faithfulness. Parents, even if your kids are big, you may want to take a stone and just simply touch them with it and say, I I do remember the day. And here's a symbol reminding you of the day however however you want to do that most of all remembering God is faithful to all of you that are watching online let me take just a moment to say we invite you to come if you wish to come by the church this afternoon from two o'clock to three o'clock there'll be someone here I will be here from two o'clock to three o'clock would would love to just give you this little remembrance, this little symbol, and invite you to remember your baptism. For some, that that time does not work, and that's okay. Tuesday, again, from noon to one o'clock, we'll be right here, and uh, maybe that's a better time for you. Let me just go on to say, if neither of those times is good for you, please just call the office, and let's set up a time that is good for you to just come by and, and receive one of these little remembrances. If you're here, listening, if you're here and have never been baptized, let let me invite you to just give me, Pastor Matt, Pastor Anna, give us a call. We would love to talk to you more about this. After a word of prayer, you're going to be invited to come forward. Remember, 
kneel to pray, if you wish, at the kneelers. Return to your seat. We're going to begin with the ones up here in the front and just slowly make our way back. And again, allowing space for everyone. And begin to make your way forward. We will, we will sing as we come the, the words of uh, grace greater than our sin is going to be on the, uh, on the screen. And uh, so today, with a simple symbol, we remember a powerful gift. A simple symbol, but a powerful gift. Baptism is all about God. I invite you to come, remember, and give God the glory. Friends, let's, uh, let's pray together. Lord, our lives are yours. Probably no other statement makes, brings greater peace to our lives than to say, we belong to you. Help us hear you again over and over and over. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, say to us, you are mine. I love you. I know the waters you swim in. I am with you. Lord, thank you for the moment, the event, the day, the time, whenever it was, wherever it was that we received the sacrament of Christian baptism. Today, we pause right here, right now, to say we thank you for that truth, for that promise. Now, Lord, help us. May, this, uh, may these next few moments of, of singing words of grace and singing words of blessing, of coming and receiving a symbol in our hands, may these next few moments be moments of, uh, of reestablishing, recommitting, re going deeper in our relationship with you. We love you. We thank you for the truth, the incredible, wonderful truth that you love us. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.